What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at area plots with pandas and python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at area plots. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube fit to get 50% off lifetime membership to all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. All right, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at area plots with pandas, but super quick announcement. I've just completed my chat GTP tkinter course over at tkinter.com. If you're interested, we built this really cool app that uses custom kinter to make it kind of cool and modern. And it allows you to interface with chat GTP in any of your apps that you create. And we do it by creating this little simple app. So you can type in things like give me 10 female dog name suggestions. Chat GTP returns a list of these things. You could say, uh, I'm vegan. What should I have for lunch? Click speak to chat GTP. That depends on what you're in the mood for. Las Vegas has a wide variety of restaurants. It knows I'm in Vegas. And you can choose from whatever you want, blah, blah, blah. You could say, uh, given this Python, why is it wrong? And then we could go, you know, print hello world, something like that. It's missing quotation marks around the string hello world. The correct syntax would be print hello world. Very cool. All kinds of cool things you can do with this. Like I said, this course is now up live on tkinter.com. I've got a video on the YouTube channel here. You can learn about it. You just head over to code me YouTube channel or click the link up here. And it's just this how to create a chat GTP chat bot. Or you can head over to tkinter.com if you want to sign up for this course. You just have to sign up for membership at tkinter.com. And it's just a part of the membership there with, with all the other courses as well. Normally, that's $149 for membership. But if you come down here and then type in chat GPT, click apply, boom, it knocks $100 off. It pages $49 for that course and all my other courses and all my future tkinter.com courses that show up there and no extra charge, one-time fee, nothing ever to pay ever again. So very cool, check that out if you're interested. So like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at area plots and I love area plots, they're very cool. They're like line charts or line graphs, but the area underneath is shaded in color and it's gonna look a little something like this and there's all kinds of cool things we can do with area plots. We're gonna look at those in this video today. So let's head over to our code. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other pandas videos in this series. So check that out if you haven't so far. And I've got the same code that we've been using the last couple of videos. We import pandas and NumPy. We create this random number thing. Use this line right there to make sure you can put charts and graphs in your Jupyter notebook. And then we've created a data frame with 100 random numbers. And you can see them right here. For this video, I'm gonna scale this back to like 25, just so it's a little easier to read these uh, area plots. So you can see we've got positive and negative numbers, and we've got 25 rows and four columns. So how do we create an area plot? Very simple. We just go my underscore df dot plot and we set the kind to area now if you do this you're going to get an error as we'll see right now and we can look through here and it says you know something about this stacked values and if you read here it says when stacked is true each column must be either all positive or all negative well if you look at our numbers here some of them are negative and some of them are positive so there's a couple of ways we could fix this depending on your data first we could just set the stacked to false if we do that, we get this area plot, but this is kind of wonky. It's got stuff going positive. It's got stuff going negative. Maybe that's what you want, maybe not. We could also just change our data to absolute values, right? So we can come over here and go dot abs, and that's a function, dot plot. Python is object oriented, so you could stack things like that by going, you know, dot abs, dot plot, dot, 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 whatever you want. You could just keep adding things. That's one of the nice things about Python. If we were on this now, boom, here we go. Now, this is cool, definitely an area plot, but I don't know, it's kind of very stark, right? Very bright, very kind of hard to read because these things are all stacked on top of each other. And you may not be able to tell what some of the stuff is behind it or in front of it. It's just a little wonky. So we can set the shading here. So let's come up here, grab this guy, and let's play with the shading. And we do that by setting the alpha, right? And this is gonna be a number between zero and one. And sort of think of it as percentages, you know, but not really, but sort of. But we can set this to say 0 0.3. And when we run this now, it's nice and sort of almost transparent. The closer to zero, the more transparent you'll be. So if you say one, it's very transparent versus if you go, you know, like 0 0.8, that's, you know, much, much less transparent. So you could set it maybe at five, maybe that's kind of good. 
whatever you're interested in for your specific data. You can play around with that. Pretty simple and pretty cool. We can add a title to this guy. So let's copy this. Come down here and add a title. So we just set the title flag to whatever. So we can say my awesome area plot, <laughs> right? Very exciting. And boom, here we get my awesome area plot. It's got a little title up there. Very cool. We can add a legend. So if we come back here and copy this. We can add a legend. We've looked at legends in other video. We just set the legend tab to say false, right? Boom, before we had this legend right here, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? Now it's gone. That's very cool. We've got all of these columns plotted. We could just plot one if we want. So let's grab this, come down here, and let's say we want just one. How would we do that? Well, we just come over to our data frame and add square brackets. And let's say we just want Monday, right? M-O-N, boom. There, we just get Monday. Very cool. We could plot two columns or three or as many as you want or as few as you want. So if you want to do more than one, it would be something like this. But let me get rid of this. And instead of one set of square brackets, it's going to be two set of square brackets. So it's a square bracket with a Python list in it. So let's say we wanted Monday and Thursday. Boom. There we go. I mean, we could do as many as we want, right? We could do, I don't know, Wednesday too. You just add each one in as you like. Very cool. Now, normally we can get the information from a function. We know this by hitting shift tab in that function. So what you do is you put your cursor in there and hit shift tab, which I have just done, and nothing happens. How come? Well, that's because we have object oriented stuff going on. So this absolute value is getting in the way of this call right here. So if we want to learn about the plot function, we can take out that absolute value temporarily, come back over here, hit shift tab, and then boom, it pops up. So that's kind of useful. And there's all kinds of stuff in here you can play with, right? So we can play with subplots, we can change the layout, we can use the title we already looked at, we can add grid lines, just add a true or false Boolean flag to that grid equals true, for instance, and you'll get your grid lines. We got the legend we already played with. And you can play around with all kinds of stuff. And you can look through here, you can set an X label or a Y label on stuff, you can change the font size, right? Add a different color map. Uh, and this table one is kind of interesting. We can look at that real quick. Let me grab this. And what this will do is add a table underneath with the data from your either your series or your data frame. Now ours, just because the way we did it, it doesn't work great. And now we'll see first we need to set this back to dot absolute. I want to forget to do that. Okay, so now we can add table equals true. Run this, boom, we get this table underneath it. And you'll notice there's two things because we've only used, you know, Monday through Thursday, if we wanted to use all of our data, I'm going to get rid of this and run it again, we'd get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four rows, right? But you'll see there's no data in here. And that's just because of the way we set up our data frame. If you play around with this, you can actually get numbers in there. But I don't know, this looks a little janky to me, it's all crammed together. There's better ways we can do this, we'll look at in other videos, but you can play around with it if you like. And uh, pretty cool. So those are area plots, very useful, very cool, very fun, very colorful, <laughs> and uh, very easy to do. And uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So it's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.